Joining us on the WZFG Newsline now is Cass County Sheriff Paul Laney. And, uh, Paul, thanks for hanging with us. We got rolling on an earlier subject before the break, so thanks for being patient here with us. Sorry we kept you waiting there a little bit. Um, Not a problem. We wanted to talk to you a little bit. Uh, I was out of the office last week, but uh, Deb and Matt uh, came across a, an interesting story regarding uh, President Obama and a move that he made regarding some surplus military equipment that could have been headed your way. And, and and we just know that's about all we know about this. Can you give us just a little summary of what's happening and, and what this means to law enforcement in our area? Well, it's not only law enforcement in our area, and it's law enforcement nationwide. And Presidential Order 13688, uh, after uh, the Ferguson incidents, basically suspended certain types of military surplus equipment for law enforcement across the nation. And then uh, other certain uh, military surplus could still come to us, but it's with a, a number of caveats. You have to have uh, specific types uh, of some training, and it's very ambiguous as to, to what it is. And then uh, what can happen if uh, you you have a training and maybe you go help somebody that doesn't have the training, and then what happens uh, with that? Do we get our, our privileges suspended? So it's, it's, it's the frustration is it's such an overreaction to one incident in Ferguson, Missouri, and then there's basically an insinuation across the nation that all law enforcement needs this massive revamping, that we have to have all this civil rights training, that we have to do a lot of, of things that we already do and do very well, the way we serve our citizenry. And so the, the caveats put on it, and, and then some of the things that have been put on the prohibited list uh, are detrimental to a lot of, of, of law enforcement agencies across the nation. So it's very frustrating. It was uh, an overreaction to uh, a lot of things that happened that has happened. Um, and you take one incident, and then you you know you try to, to put all law enforcement into one you know basically one bag, and uh, and say you all need this, and you all have to go through this when. Uh, we don't feel anybody needs to go through it because there wasn't a problem in the first place. Sheriff, would you characterize this as anti-law enforcement? I would say it certainly insinuates away. It's insinuating that law enforcement across this nation, I think this administration and uh, those that are, are writing the documents and writing, writing the, the order and writing the caveats uh, are certainly sending that message. They're basically trying to tell us here, uh, whether they're saying it's here in Fargo, North Dakota, somewhere in California, or somewhere in Texas, uh, that we don't we don't know how to serve our citizens, and that we don't know how to take care of our people, and, and the federal government has to come in from Washington and D.C. to tell us how to do that. And that is just it's just not right. It's overreaching, and it's all on misperceptions. It's just plain wrong. And so it's bigger than just uh, just not getting the equipment. It's the message that they're sending us, and that's why we're taking such a stance. Sheriff Laney, any idea where the surplus military equipment will be going, if not to law enforcement? You know, it, it all belongs to the Department of Defense anyway. And, you know, and before we get too far into this, because I've read a lot of misinformation that has been coming out, whether uh, whoever's doing the writing, whether it's from the media, whether it's just not being you know carried, carried the, the proper way. When we start talking surplus military equipment, we're not talking, you know, tanks and fighter planes and, and rocket propelled grenades or any of that. There is no law enforcement agency in America, and I will repeat that, there's no law enforcement agency in America that should have a tank, should have a rocket propelled grenade, or have, you know, cannons and, and howitzers and that type of stuff. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking... 99% of this is defensive equipment, uh, you know, helmets. Uh, we've been banned now from having helmets. We're banned from having, uh, you know, they use the term grenade launcher, but we don't use them in that aspect. They, they're used to deliver smoke. They're used to deliver CS cast, that type of situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest thing was the, was the uniforms. We're not allowed to have camouflage uniforms. We're not allowed to have uh, the, the, the helmets that we wear upon our head. We're not allowed to have... Um, uh, certain types of armored vehicles. We're not, you know, they don't come with an offensive capability. They do not have uh, cannons, and they do not have howitzers on them. They are they stop bullets, <laughs> and that's why we want them. We want to be able to protect our citizens, and we want to be able to protect our officers. And it, it, a perfect example of, of why this was such a grand sweep. In one case, they say, well, you can you can get the the, the wheeled armored vehicles. Uh, you can still get them with specific types of training, but you can't have the track armor vehicles. They look, they look bad. They look bad. They look mean. They look tough. Well, that's really easy to say when you're sitting in an office in Washington, D.C., and you're looking out at concrete outside your window, and you just 
make this blanket statement that law enforcement across the nation doesn't need a track vehicle. While it doesn't quite work when you live in an area like we do where there's a lot of snow, and you might need that track vehicle to get across the snow during a blizzard to go do a rescue to, um, you know, if you're involved in a situation, let's say there is an armed standoff or the individual shooting. Well, as we all know in this part of the country, there's four or five feet of snow on the ground. You're not getting through that with a wheeled vehicle. Yeah. Same thing goes when you live in the deserts. The sheriffs of Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, uh, they need those vehicles to get across the terrain. They, you know, same thing in the marshy area. So it doesn't got anything to do with with a, a military capability, it's got to do with being able to traverse terrain, protect your deputies and your officers, and protect your citizens. You know, Bank of America was a perfect example of, uh, in 1997, that's what changed law enforcement across the nation, was the Bank of America shootout in L.A. in 1997. Well, uh, where, we, we, we have Congressman Kramer, by the way, joining us Wednesday in the program. I'm, I'm going to raise this with him, as I'm sure you have, because it sounds like a congressional fix is necessary here, as, as much as they're limiting it, Sheriff. So. And, and that is one of the things we have been saying. I, you know, as, as you know, it's not just you know Sheriff Paul Laney of Cass County. I serve on the board of directors for the National Sheriff's Association, and so I'm re- representing the nation's sheriffs on this committee, as well as the Western State Sheriff's Association. I'm their rep for that as well. So it is something that Congressman Kramer and our um, congressional delegation is very well aware of. And I'm involved in. I've kept them in the loop the entire time. Uh, I wrote NSA's response in conjunction with our director of government affairs and, and one of our legal interns. And so they, they've, they've got copies of everything we've done. So they're very well aware of it. Uh, and I believe Congressman Kramer will, will certainly have a perspective on it that, that I, myself personally, I think will be, will be in, in favor for our area. So this doesn't come down to a perception of us having military equipment. Certain military equipment we absolutely should never have in our arsenal, in our arsenal. But the ability to protect our deputies and our officers from, from, uh, from fire, you know, the same type of equipment that stops a bullet in Iraq is the same type of equipment that stops a bullet in Fargo, North Dakota, and we owe that to our law enforcement officers to protect them in these very changing times. So that's the type of stuff we're talking in. It should be a congressional issue. Congress should weigh in on this. It shouldn't be just a broad sweep of an executive order with no thought behind it. Sheriff Laney, this has been really good stuff, but we could talk to you about it all morning. Thanks for giving us a, a glimpse of it, and it's a story that we'll certainly be following as the days go by. Thank you for taking the time this morning. Well, I appreciate your time as well. You guys have a great week. You do the same. Sheriff Paul Laney from Cass County joining us here on the Need to Know Morning Show. Wow, the sheriff had a few wow. things to say. Glad he's, uh, 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 you know, you're hearing his voice more nationally now. He's doing, he's speaking out a lot on behalf of the National Sheriff's Association and uh, doing a great job. So Absolutely. Making the case. That just makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up to hear that story. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. just needs to be a little common sense injected in the conversation here.